Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. The mayor of Reno joins us, Hillary Sheevy, here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Washington's reckless, irresponsible spending is costing Nevadans plenty. And Senator Catherine Cortez Masto has also voted for spending that's even more reckless, allowing COVID relief checks to go to convicted criminals in prison, including the Boston Marathon bomber, a Michigan sex abuser, murderers and drug dealers, and voting to let COVID checks go to illegal immigrants. Tell Senator Cortez Masto to start voting against reckless and wasteful spending to stop inflation. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always delighted to welcome back to the program the mayor of Reno, Hillary Sheevy. Pleasure to have you back. It's nice to see you. It's nice to see you in person. Indeed, indeed. So much right. Zoom. And for those that don't know, we have been friends for a very long time, family friends. Right. Um, so uh, we were talking about this right before we started taping, and it's a big issue for me. Yeah. And you were saying that, you know, there's a big disconnect between you and Southern Nevada, mm -hmm. right? I think that's a huge issue. And mm -hmm. here's the reason I think it's a huge issue. As more and more power moves to Southern Nevada, it concerns me, and it has done for 20 years, that people in Southern Nevada, you know, people in the North sometimes say they don't like Southern Nevada. Right. People in the South say, where is Northern Nevada? Right. They think that Reno is Ely or Elko. They have no idea what Reno Sparks is right. in terms of an area that there's a half a million people in this right. area. We're the third largest city. Right, and it concerns me that as the legislature moves more and more power-wise mm -hmm. to Southern Nevada, that we're gonna end up losing out yeah. if people don't know what's here. And yeah. I think it's incumbent, and it was one of the reasons why we wanted to make Nevada Newsmakers a statewide show, mm -hmm. that Northern Nevada markets itself to Southern Nevada. First of all, yeah. Sunday through Thursday, you have all these casino workers in Las Vegas in 120 degree heat in the middle of summer. Wouldn't it be a great place to be able to come up and play golf um, in Northern Nevada Sunday Absolutely. through Thursday when they're not working? Yeah. Um, wouldn't it be a great place for them to come skiing, come visit Lake Tahoe? I think we're missing out on huge yeah. opportunities, both politically and yeah. recreationally and business-wise, by really not And really marketing to that destination. Right. So I think I'm glad you brought that up because that was one of the reasons why I've tried really hard to sort of brand Reno on that national level as well. And I think you make such a good point. I will say this because I do sit on the uh, RCVA board. We just uh, landed Spirit Airlines right. and going to Las Vegas, right? Like, and so we are starting to really pay attention to that market. But I absolutely understand your concerns and, and feel that way sometimes whenever, especially you see so many electeds in the South, that oftentimes, you know, it's uh, Mark Amaday and myself up here going, hey, <laughs> we're the North, everyone, right? So, of course, um, I'm trying to look out for 
um, you know, our portion of Nevada where I think it is so critical. And how important is Washoe County? It's so important. So I do think, I think it's a huge mistake, especially for politicians to think that Southern Nevada is where it's won and where it's all at. Um, it's well, a and, big and piece of it up here. Well, also, the issues are essentially the same. It's different sized yes. communities, but the situations are the same, whether it be homeless, housing yes. prices, uh, diversification. Yes. And I think that Northern Nevada has so much to uh, help Southern Nevada learn about diversifying right. the economy. I mean, right. we would, they would kill in Southern Nevada to have had you know, a bounce back to a 3% unemployment rate exactly as we saw right. in Northern Nevada. That's exactly right. One of the things that's really interesting too, a lot of the time we actually start programs up here, um, pilot them, and then they end up going to Southern Nevada because we're obviously smaller, but we're more community-based, right? We're less entertainment. Um, and so we see that a lot, reaching out, and especially like in the housing market, oftentimes they're calling us and saying, hey, what are you doing in Reno? And typically that's one of the reasons why we saw, you, we're seeing this investment in housing because we're ready to go with projects. We've been uh, working with developers and people in the community and we kind of already have um, our foot right out of the gate. Well, one of the things that strikes me, um, and in conversations with uh, builders down in Southern Nevada, um, a lot of them are laying off, the home builders especially, mm -hmm. are laying off employees. There was one company that I'm aware of laid off 150 employees a couple yeah. of weeks ago because of the interest rates going up. And we have job opportunities up here. I don't understand why Northern Nevada is not reaching out to the Southern Nevada builders mm -hmm. and saying, hey, let's figure out where to house you but we've got the work here that we can't hire enough people for. Right. You've got to slow down there. I mean, that just seems like it would be a right. really good thing for so many reasons. Right, well, the builders, we were just talking about this, the Builders Association has started to really kind of reach out and say, hey, we have a lot of opportunity here in the North. I think it's just they're not familiar with it, but I will say this, when people come to Reno, it, it is unbelievable. They're like blown away. They're, they cannot believe um, sort of, I mean, we have one of the best backyard, you know, outdoor playgrounds you could ever ask for. Sure. And not to mention, I'm very proud of this, we were just voted best small city in America. Um, and so, obviously, I mean, Reno has changed so much. And I think people really are looking for that great quality of life. And Reno seems to have it. But the investment that's coming into Reno is outstanding. I've never seen it like this before. It's mind blowing. It is mind blowing. And I've never seen it like this, but also it's like people are like, wow, you're like in Austin, Texas now. And now more than ever, we're seeing, you know, um, our kids from the university that want to live, work, and play here. Before they were like, oh, I need to go get a job somewhere else. They're all staying here. Things have really changed dramatically. Not to mention, we're really working closely, and it's nice to work with President Sandoval. Uh, you know, to really bring them into the downtown core. We're changing Center Street to University Avenue, which is exciting, those kinds of things. But also, look at the amount of student housing that's coming into downtown. Um, and, you know, uh, my hope is to change the bowling stadium to the Wolfpack Bowl. And make, really? that, part, make that part of um, their home. And, I mean, who knows, we could possibly maybe see a collegiate bowling team here and then an esports team and things like that because we really want to avoid the brain drain and we really want um, you know these these young kids that are so talented so smart all the innovation that's coming out of the university we want them to stay right here in Reno okay all right so you brought up a couple <laughs> I of just, big deals here. I just gave you a little bit of I Ding. guess breaking news yes yes, yes <laughs> indeed um, yeah. So the National Bowling Stadium has been around since 1994 was mm -hmm. when it was being built and opened. Um, and although people don't realize it because there was a deal cut yes. with the local uh, bowling uh, alleys mm -hmm. um, to not steal their business for this National Bowling Stadium. Right. And so it wasn't open to the public. But two out of every three years for the last 30 years, um, that has been an incredible driver yes. of slow times in Northern Nevada yes. to bring all these bowlers from across the country. Um, so. Um, we just signed another, uh, not we, but the city yeah. just signed another contract with the bowlers extending uh -huh. this for a few more years. Um, how do you see this playing so, out yeah. with, with the university and, and yeah. have you talked to the people who run the tournaments mm -hmm. um, about what yeah. this might look like? 
Well, it, it is hard to believe that that stadium was never open to the public, quite honestly. So I've really pushed for that. Well, it would never have opened if... Well, that's true. <laughs> but there are so many days that it sits vacant. Right. So we really should be using it. So now we're really looking at it for a multi-purpose facility to put you know, different events in there like eSports and things like that. Um, it's a really phenomenal place and people don't realize that. And I don't think we have marketed the, you know, the facility best to our ability, that's for sure. But working with the USBC, they have been tremendous partners and they're realizing- This is the bowling, the United yes, States this is bowling. the bowling Congress. They realize that in order for that facility to maintain itself, that we've got to program it and bring um, other you know, amenities. And especially, I think, being where it is right in downtown Reno and so close to student housing, we want to activate the bottom, like with a great coffee house um, and also a brewery, those kinds of things. And to really open it up to the public and say, hey, this is now part of the community. Because for okay. so long it hasn't been. So and that's been tough. You're, you're right, because the contract was pretty tight and stringent. Okay, so um, how are the bowling proprietors in Reno feeling yeah. about this? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone realizes it's, you know, those, those facilities have suffered for a really long time, and it's right in our downtown core. And so I think everyone is finally to a place where like, yes, we need to make it successful. Right, so. And it's part of the Convention Authority. Yes. It's always been yes. run by the Convention Well, it's owned Authority. by the city of Reno, but the RCVA does run it. So, y and that's what's always been sort of this interesting dynamic. But I will say this, cities should not be in the facility business. That's for sure. But that happened a long time ago before, um, you know, this council. So. Oh yes, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think. I'm who giving was it? away was it my Mayor age. Mayor Pete Sferraza that built that. I can't. Who was it? Uh, Sam. You no, would know. No, I who think was it? Was it? Jeff. was it Jeff Griffin? I, I think Jeff. Or was Griffin. it Mayor Pete? I can't remember. No, no. I, I think it was beyond Mayor Pete. Was it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because it was after the movie theaters, and that was Jeff Griffin. So yeah, it was Jeff Griffin. Um, and Charles McNeely and, right. and, and that group right. uh, that were amazing in terms of t turning around That's the exactly downtown right. and, and Reno in general. Yeah. Um, eSports, okay, so you brought up yeah, eSports. So what, what do you envision there? Because I am so excited about eSports, but it seems like the gaming industry is just waiting till people can gamble on it yeah. and not taking advantage of the literally thousand, well, millions, millions. of people millions. that could come. Yes. Uh, ben Kiekeffer was on the show during the legislative session talking about that you could fill Allegiant Stadium for multiple days in a row in every other convention facility in Las Vegas if you had an eSports tournament there. Yes, I've been pushing eSports for the last five years. I'm a big believer in eSports. And I just know that you know this is sort of the future. And we're also looking at things like the metaverse and Web3 and um, cryptocurrency, like all these um, different assets and things like that. So I think for a city to be relevant, these are the things that you need to look at. Um, so that is a great place to actually, you know, you can have the bowling lanes and then you have the screens. You could actually turn those screens into eSports screens and interactive and you can put a console right there, you know, at that sort of bowling center. Um, so it's really a great multi-purpose facility that's never been used for anything other than bowling. Well, you know, the other side of that is um, for people that will be going, oh, well, that's just young people. Well, first of all, that's nonsense because mm -hmm. people of all kinds of ages play esports, yeah. uh, especially in Southeast Asia. Um, and, uh, you know, you could really pack that place Absolutely. with all kinds of people. You look at the BTS concerts, uh, the South Huge. Korean pop group, um, played four uh, consecutive days at uh, Allegiant Stadium, yes. sold out 65,000 seats per night, and it was families. It wasn't just yes. kids, it was the whole family. Yes. So that, I know, to me I'm brings I'm impressed. You are like right cutting edge. You know, this <laughs> well, is what this new generation is Madam really Mayor, you've I been missing so, this asset. I am so <laughs> impressed. But this is what I'm saying, this new generation is really embracing it and obviously technology sort of speeds th those things up but i think if cities aren't looking at ways in which you can sort of bring in you know new demographics that's where they're going to really lose out that's the cities that will have the competitive advantage are those that are looking at technology innovation esports and he's exactly right i mean you should see in europe it's just 
the amount of people, you know, sort of flocking to esports is just, it's really unbelievable. Oh, it's stunning. Um, yeah. You used the word metaverse. I wondered what you meant specifically by that word. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting. It's all virtual reality, you know, um, and kind of looking Dubai just actually, I think they just launched a city hall in the metaverse which is really sort of interesting concept. But think about if you could visit a city anywhere just because you go into the metaverse, right? And people are saying, wow, what's the metaverse? And it's hard to imagine because it's not like in the physical sense. But when we look at technology, um, it, that's what really is starting to bring people in and connect us in ways that we have never seen before. And I think that it's a really interesting concept and again, the United States Conference of Mayors is really looking at innovation technology and what's happening in the metaverse. And that's because we know we can pull in a different demographic and people that typically might not be engaged with their government. We think that's important. I think it's important you could eventually go into the metaverse and get a business license, those kinds of things. And maybe it's a so lot it's kind easier. Of, so it's yes. the internet of everything. Really. Yes, exactly. And maybe it's a lot easier and more approachable in that sense for some people to engage with City Hall. All right, let's take a break. We'll make some money here and then okay, we'll be good. right back. <laughs> Leaders find solutions. Politicians are part of the problem. Take Catherine Cortez Masto and Adam Laxalt. Cortez Masto co-sponsored a bill capping insulin costs. Adam Laxalt called a plan that caps costs reckless. No surprise, Laxalt is personally invested in big drug companies. When they make money, he makes money. That's the difference. Catherine Cortez Masto is lowering the cost of drugs. Adam Laxalt sells out and cashes in. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your air conditioner breaks down today. We fix it today. Why sweat for days while your air is down? When Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get cool again. For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 or see us online at nevadaheating.com. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with the mayor of Reno, Hillary Sheevy. Um, let's talk a little bit about gaming because a lot of times, and I may have said this to you before in previous interviews, people talk about gaming as though it's going away in Reno, and it really isn't no. because the, the, the older bad properties have for the most part gone away, and the properties we have now are just doing dynamic things. Monarch, one of the most successful companies that yeah. owns the Atlantis, uh, gaming countries in the country, their stock price is higher than right. just about anybody's. Right. Um, you've got uh, Grand Sierra, which mm -hmm. I'm hearing rumors of expansion plans and potentially yes. housing yes. Um, out there as well. Yes. Uh, I'll let them reveal their own plans. Yeah. Um, and then you've got uh, the Sands, uh, which is dramatically yeah. improving that property. And it's a little controversial, but at the same time, it's huge investment in Reno. Without so at doubt. this point, uh, what percentage of the GDP in Reno yeah. is gaming? Oh, it's it's very large, and I think people forget that. Not to mention, we've seen record numbers with gaming. Stunning. They just came out, right? And I think people need to realize uh, they're also, uh, they create the most jobs here. And so um, it, gaming is really, really critical on so many levels. So I think that we would be naive um, to think that it was something like in the past. And actually, we market it quite a bit because it's great to be outdoors in the day 
and go game at night, right? And so it's actually a very attractive way for us to say, hey, come to Reno, because there's well, still a lot of people that love to gamble. Right, but also the entertainment that we have mm -hmm. in the biggest little city is stunning. I mean, we're bringing yeah. in, because of Caesars arrangements with their uh, Las Vegas properties, they're able to bring in huge name acts to Absolutely. smaller venues, but you've got the new owners of the Sparks Nugget mm -hmm. that have a 9,000 seat venue yeah. that are bringing concerts in all the way through at least October that I've seen so far. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, from an entertainment perspective, it's also good. Let's take yes. another break here, because we chewed up a lot of time in that first segment, which okay. was great. Um, but I got another area I want to get to. Okay. We'll be right back after this timeout. Washington's reckless, irresponsible spending is costing Nevadans plenty. And Senator Catherine Cortez Masto has also voted for spending that's even more reckless, allowing COVID relief checks to go to convicted criminals in prison, including the Boston Marathon bomber, a Michigan sex abuser, murderers and drug dealers and voting to let COVID checks go to illegal immigrants. Tell Senator Cortez Masto to start voting against reckless and wasteful spending to stop inflation. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker and you've got a lot of convention space and meeting breakout space for people. Tell us about what's available. Well we can handle a group up to about 250 uh, and anywhere as small as 10 or 15. So it really depends on what you're looking for, what the customer's looking for. We're open to anything. It's a beautiful drive, and if you live in South Reno, it's probably about 30, 35 minutes, so it's real easy to get to. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Hillary Sheevy. She is the mayor of Reno. Um, we had Adam Kramer on the program, oh. who's the chairman of the Airport Authority Board. Um, and he was talking about his country and zero. Um, but afterward, we talked about having him come back yeah. uh, with the head of the airport to talk about what's going on there. This is going to yeah. be what? One of the biggest, if not the biggest, public works project yeah. ever in the city of Reno? Yes. It's Tell us really about hard it. to believe that we're going to expand our our little airport, right? It's sort of that, you know, <laughs> it's exciting to see, but at the same time, we all love the functionality of, of our airport. You get in, you get out, but it is, it's a massive millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars going into that project and it will create a lot of jobs, but also it will allow us to have a lot more efficiency at the airport. And that's also been kind of challenging too when we want to attract airlines. And now we know more than ever that a lot of people are living here because of the pandemic, right? And they can sort of work remotely, but they also have to travel. And so we're seeing a lot of that. And the data is really showing us that we have to expand the airport, not um, to mention for economic reasons, but for safety reasons. Um, that, you know, is other uh, another big factor. So uh, it's interesting. Adam's on everything. He's on the airport board. I think he's on the renown board. I mean, he was over at Switch. You know, he's He's sort of a mover and shaker, so I'm glad that you had him on. He's, he's a great guy. But that project is going to be absolutely phenomenal. And then once that happens, major, major airlines will be looking at Reno and saying, you know, how do we get in there? So I'm really excited um, because I think it's long overdue 
and you're starting to see you know traffic back up um, on the freeway and um, it's just getting really difficult very little parking left those kinds of things it's kind of stunning because after we dealt with covid in the way that we did where things were empty parking lots were empty yes. it was really easy to get in and out and all of a sudden tsa didn't have enough people to work uh, the right. tsa lines and so things were getting backed up there and then running out of parking to where don't park here please find another place or be right. dropped off right um, it was kind of fascinating to see yeah. um but yeah, I mean, I remember when I first came to Reno in 1978, uh, <laughs> you know, you walked down a staircase to the tarmac and yeah. then walked into the building. So right? we have improved a lot since then, yes. but still it, it'll be a, a massive mm -hmm. effort. Uh, over how many years do you think that it's gonna take to, to completely do the, uh, the project? Yeah, I think it's gonna be probably, um, you know, five to six years. It's gonna take a little time. You know, we're going through that growing pain phase even even through Reno look at how downtown is changing I mean look at Harris that's going to be incredible housing and beautiful condos I just watched that project but you know our, our city now with the census um, they just said you know we've now moved into a medium-sized city and I was born and raised the here the so biggest medium-sized city the, in the world that's <laughs> right the biggest medium-sized city in the world so it's really interesting to see it but especially with the airport that's really changed so much dynamic because of the pandemic, because now you have so many commuters that are needing to fly, those kinds of things. And also, we've really ramped up our tourism and visitor amenities, right? And so we've really marketed Reno like, like no other. I just had um, a thousand attendees here for the United States Conference of Mayors. Surgeon General came in, you know, that was great. Um, so so just, we're, we're, we're almost out of time here. So I just want to ask yeah. you one quick question. Yes. You do have a, a mayoral race coming up. Uh, Eddie Lorton is running against you again. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to debate on Nevada newsmakers if we can put this together? Yes, absolutely. Anything for you, you know that. You're a sweetheart. Yeah. Madam Mayor, thank, thank you so you much so for much. doing this as always. Thank and we'll you. be right back. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, Retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over one in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. It's the $150,000 Island Time giveaways going on now at Tamarack Casino. Win up to $10,000 in weekly cash and free play giveaways. And over $50,000 in grand prize giveaways, including Hawaiian vacations. It's the $150,000 Island Time giveaways at Tamarack Casino. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. You can also check our archive going back to 2005 on our website. Again, NevadaNewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.